Max Gawler, Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cochin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hey, it's MJ from the Coaches Panel. I hope you're well. And in 2025, if you are a draft coach, the good news for you is we have got a brand new platform for you to play your draft league on. Joining me on this episode is the founder of Keeper, and we are going to talk through when, what, how, why, everything you need to know about Keeper to prepare you for the upcoming fantasy footy season. For those of us that have played and been in the fantasy footy community for a little bit of time, Ryan's a familiar face and voice. He's the founder of Ultimate Footy, which for the better part of a decade was the go-to drafting platform. He's now back, though, bigger and ever with a brand new platform, and he joins me on the podcast now. Ryan, good to see you. Good to hear from you. And congrats on a brand new drafting platform. Thanks, MJ. It's good to be back in the mix after a bit of a hiatus, uh, a bit more behind the scenes. And yeah, I'm super excited to yeah be independent again and get to talk to all my old draft mates again and try and come up with something that everyone's going to love. So yeah, really, really happy to be back and um, pretty excited with how the old platform's coming together. Uh, we're going to ask you a ton of questions about the platform, when it's going to be open. We want to talk about a bunch of different things, the customizations, the options, what commissioners can do, what participants can expect and and facilitate there. But for those of us that aren't familiar with your work uh, and and Ultimate Footy, in a a minute or so, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your history in the fantasy footy community as well? Um, not just so that we can pump up your tyres, but you have been around and helping the fantasy community for quite a while now. Uh, I have. I've got a bit of grey in the beard now. I've been around for so long. Um, no, so I, I started my fantasy football journey probably around 20 years ago, um, playing, I think it was the dream team back then at school um, with a few mates and then got into a big NBA fan, big basketball fan and actually got into fantasy draft games um, from playing on platforms like Yahoo in NBA. I um, have, a, have a keeper league there with my friends who have been playing for yeah over 20 years now. Um, and then just, you know, given I love the footy so much, I was just thinking, God, is it possible to actually combine the two of these things and make a draft game for AFL? And um, turned out that it was. It wasn't maybe the prettiest looking thing at the time, but um, it was such a such a fun thing for me who was always tinkering with you know spreadsheets and and tech here and there to actually try and combine the two. And Ultimate Footy was born back in I think two thousand and eight was the first season it launched. Yeah, and then pretty much up until two years ago uh, was, was one of if not the leading draft platform merged in with AFL fantasy more recently although category league coaches have been able to enjoy their own unique experience back on the ultimate footy platform and maybe that's where we should start talking about some of the things that keeper is going to be able to do for us in 2025 and beyond it is a draft platform and pretty much if you can dream it Keeper can do it. So some rapid fire questions to start you off. Can you do a single season draft league on Keeper? Yeah, absolutely. It, it supports whether you're a redraft league, you're a Keeper league, a dynasty league. Um, doesn't really matter. You can do anything. So in all leagues, essentially get set up the same. But when you go through the onboarding process, there'll be a question there to ask you what type you're doing. And that helps us do things like um, calculate different ADPs based on whether you're a redraft league or a, or a keeper league. Because obviously, yeah, those can get skewed quite heavily if you are in a keeper league. Uh, your pick one might actually be someone who's really pick 130, you know what I mean? Because all the good guys have been kept. So yeah, if you're a redraft league, you can jump on. Um, maybe it's the first time you've ever done draft, which I hope there's a lot of new people who do jump on the platform and give it a go. Uh, if you're the first time uh, player or league, then yeah, you can set up your league and then maybe throughout the year you, you decide, hey, let's actually move this into a different style of league because we want to keep some players and um, you can definitely do all that stuff too. So he's dropped a few nuggets of gold right there in the first few moments that you might not have picked up. ADP, 
that is format dependent. So much in our previous experiences with drafts, it's, or the ADP, is this a keeper bias? Is it a dynasty bias? Is it a single season? No, based on how you enter into your draft, you will have the customization of ADP to give you at least an illustration of what the community is using keeper on and the type of player range you could be picking them, let alone the ability to just change your mind and go, nah, we love this league. We like this. Yeah, let's expand it, continue on. So some great stuff as well. There's been some pain points, Ryan, in the drafting community, uh, just with how certain parts, and it's no shade at any other content um, platform that people have been able to draft, but there's been some frustrations with some ways that things such as buy rounds have been either given leagues customization around, uh, lockouts, uh, rolling lockouts, how to handle subs, the emergency threshold, captaincy. I've just given you a bunch of different pain points there. How's Keeper going to help us navigate these in 2025? Yeah, so maybe starting with the buy rounds, um, it's not great when you have to either skip the buy rounds or have players who score donuts during those weeks. So uh, looking at a few options there to uh, replace those players' scores. I know a lot of leagues use averages to try and um, try and replace those scores. Other ways is actually just reducing the number of players on the field for those rounds. Um, one of the one of the good things I've tried to do with this with this build is allow you to kind of customize your settings round by round. Because the way the AFL works is one round you could have four buyers, next round you could have two buyers, five buyers. You know, it could change. I um, want to be prepared for anything going forward. So. Um, having a having a round by round configuration also allows the commissioner to just kind of set that all up front and then sit back and and have it play out. So everyone knows, all right, when we get to week four and five team, um, six teams are on a buy. Um, this is how we're going to handle it. We might have to set one less player each. We might have a best eighteen or whatever it is. So um, the exact options are still a little bit in flux, but. Those are the kind of the way I'm thinking and got some preliminary stuff done there. Um, obviously, there's some, some more um, uh, pressing things to work on at this point in time because I want to get everyone in there as quick as possible. But yeah, that's, that's sort of the direction it's heading. And at least that um, structure is set up that we can customize week by week to basically add in those options over time. And I think that's one of the things that those of us that have played draft formats, single season keepers, dynasties, category leagues for a long period of time have, have kind of lamented we haven't had since the passing of ultimate footy it is this high level of customization for every single league so that the commissioner and the participants in the league can just make the league exactly how they like. It sounds like what Keeper's done is taken those grassroots ideas that were built back well over a decade ago now with uh, Ultimate Footy and have just been turboed up for us to a whole new level in Keeper, which is really, really exciting. One of the yeah, things like, that... On, on yeah, like on that side, just, just, just to jump in, like um, a lot of these challenges didn't exist, uh, you know, even five years ago, 10 years ago, right? There totally. wasn't really buy rounds when Ultimate Footy. So a lot of this is actually new stuff that's come from speaking to people. And, um, you know, at the same time, the, the lockout is another big one where people yeah. have expressed frustration with loopholing, whether that's good or bad. I know in the classic space, it's much more hotly debated. Um, but also just, you know, being able to do things like, um, if you if you have emergencies, if someone wants to use an emergency in a loophole position, well, maybe you can penalize those those guys by twenty percent or something, so that people aren't just using loopholes in order to to you know get a second crack of the cherry. Um, you're actually got to think more carefully around it, and uh, even like you know with captains, we can lock them at the start or. Or maybe you don't even want to have a vice captain. If you want captains, you can have just a captain only. So lots of different options that, again, are a product of speaking to leagues and really trying to understand what their current problems are and what they want to see done to get around them. It's one of the things we're so excited to partner with Keeper about in 2025 about is uh, this is a draft platform that has heard of the pain points in the community and has been built to answer these pain points in mind, not just to add them as a customization feature. One of those for Keeper and Dynasty League coaches, Ryan, has been for them to be able to make draft pick trading has generally been something that they've had a, a Google sheet or an Excel document open for uh, pretty much every keeper coach I know and commissioner has got varying forms of this rolling around where someone has documented this player, this trade, this pick, and, and has traded into this element. Um, so how is keeper going to answer the 
future draft pick trading asset component so that it's not just something that we have to do on an Excel or a Google Sheet document and hope to remember by February. How does Keeper make sure they answer this pain point for the community? Yeah, it's funny you speak about spreadsheets. I actually love seeing these spreadsheets, but almost without fail, any league that's a dynasty or keeper has a spreadsheet that's logging all of the trades, who's got the, the pick order for future seasons. Um, it was it was a super obvious one to start with, to be honest, when I looked at all of these different spreadsheets from people. Um, so yeah, what happens in the trade screen, if you're familiar with any basically draft game, you know, you know everyone knows how trades work. Um, so you'll have your players at the top and then beneath you'll get to choose also future picks from that team. And um, perhaps that team's already traded around some picks, so you'll obviously see whatever, uh, as I've currently called it, draft capital that they own. So different draft picks probably from different teams, different rounds. Um, and as a commissioner, you can set sort of how many years in advance you can allow pick trading because, um, you know, it's, it does it does take a bit of an honest system. You don't want to probably allow trading five years ahead or someone will trade all the future picks and then and the way they go so um also some guardrails around the pick trading so that um people sort of stay within the sensible limits but yeah that's the way it works you so you can then propose a player and a pick for another player or a player for two picks and yeah it, it's just like any other trader then and we we track it and then you can sort of see in the future seasons who owns what picks as i said the draft capital is listed on each team page um and yeah then you can sort of have a look at what the future draft is projecting at just like in the afl draft uh season except we don't have priority picks like those guys although some leagues i'm in there might be one or two i think could probably do with them so one That's of the true. things <laughs> that we, we we love about keeper leagues as well um isn't just the ability to trade players and to retain them for either the entirety of their afl career or as long as you'd like them doing the same with that in also the draft capital space but a, a, a not a new feature for fantasy coaches but something new that Keeper is bringing to us in 2025 is that you can do all this on whatever desktop or laptop you like, but also you'll be able to do it on an app. Is that right? That's right. If you're an Android or an iPhone user, you'll have an app. Um, iPad, it should should work on uh, tablets as well. It might not be as, as crisp, but yes, no. The um, That's the one of the, the best things about building this has been the app, and it's what everyone's been crying out for at least for the last 10 years for the ultimate footy since the app, the old app, which was very rudimentary back in the day, disappeared. People still wanted it. So um, everything's kind of been made mobile first where um, just sort of taking from some of the best practices of apps that I've used, um, particularly fantasy games in the US, we're taking that and trying to, yeah, make it super easy to access your team, your matchups, your players, do trades. Um, and to be honest, like the number one thing is the push notifications. It's a really great way to stay on top of what you've got um you know, funnily enough even some of the platforms here won't even tell you when you've when you get a trade uh, that's come into your inbox uh maybe via an email but not via a push so yeah it's it's super cool to just yeah get get notified of those things as a commissioner as well um you know if you've invited someone to join your league and they join bang there's a push notification so you know what's happening in your league without having to go chase and check every now and then this episode is brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know to check you have the tickets in your wallet first before you drive two hours to the big game. Seriously, you had one job. Now the closest you'll get to the 50-yard line is parking lot D. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Northbrook, Illinois. It's such a great feature. Things like when when players get injured, when trades go down, anything that you go, oh, I wonder if that's of value to me as A, a commissioner, or me B, a participant in my league. I can let you know, chances are that notification feature is coming to you via Keeper as well. So one of the great new initiatives, you have those moments where it's like, why is my player not scoring well? Chances are Keeper will be able to let you know that while that's going on. Have you got an absolute rubbish offer in a trade that you want to just screenshot Keeper's a receipt and send it to a mate in the league? You can do that as well. Uh, there's some amazing stuff that this app is going to be able to do for us. Hey, let's talk about 
positions for Keeper and what it might look like. Uh, one of the things that I think the community is, I don't know if they've missed but never really thought of is that dual position players are really only a, a relatively new innovation over the past maybe 10 years or so. If you've been playing any of the formats prior to that classic or a draft format, up 10 years ago, it was you had one position, that was it, and nothing more. Then over the past decade, a secondary position was allocated. But then even as recent as last year, there were moments where players such as a Sam Flanders, well, he was listed as a mid forward, but he played as a defender. Dane Zorko was another. Is Keeper going to do anything? Maybe this is crazy and revolutionary. Can a player have up to three positions available to them? Should they meet the scoring and positioning threshold? Well, I've always thought that the positions of the players should reflect what their position is in real life. And um, you know, like you said, traditionally that's been capped at two because probably don't want to give someone the ability to just have a player that can play all over the field. But um, no, I, I think that we want to do something a bit different and obviously give people the option, but triple position players will be a thing in, in keeper. So if a player uh, like what you said, Zorko or Flanders um, starts as a forward and moves into the back line, well, then they're going to get back eligibility. Now, as with most features, if you really don't like that idea because you are a traditionalist, and I know a lot of keeper leagues are very traditional, uh, you can disable that. We can You can still cap that at two. But um, actually looking at what happened last season or you know, 2024, um, there actually wasn't that many players that would have been triple eligible. The two we just mentioned are, I think Liam Baker might have also been one that would have qualified for three positions and I think Ben Miller also from Richmond. Um, but other than that, there really wasn't that many guys who would actually fall into that. So I don't know, in my opinion, if there's a couple of guys who get triple position players, that just makes it more interesting, right? Like um, oftentimes, even if they are a mid, you're not even going to use them there, although it has been uh, slightly less depth in the midfield for fantasy the last year or two with a lot of defenders is, is quite heavy. But um, the point being, yeah, you can customize that and, and even go further if you like. Um, the option will exist uh, for leagues to actually set uh, any position they want for a player or even lock play, player positions in from year to year. So um, a lot of leagues I've talked to have rules around that with their league. If you if you keep a player, you also keep their position. So um, want to be able to solve that for guys and just make it a lot easier for commissioners to manage that whole process because it is tricky when you've got 800 players in a league. Yeah, 100% is. Uh, and in terms of positional changes that, that come through the year, um, Back in the day, Ultimate Footy would often have occasionally their own position changes in addition to what was being done and issued through champion data. Sometimes that would be at the start of the season and then there'd be multiple opportunities of dual position changes throughout 2025 um, or throughout the season. In 2025, uh, are there position changes coming to Keeper as well? Oh, of course, yes. And I've always thought, you know, six weeks, I think it is for the official game is a little bit long. Um, I actually wouldn't be opposed to every week, but I do think that there's some issues if you do a weekly because, you know, a player can be can be put in a different role just for one or two games for a short-term injury. But um, yeah, I'm looking to go back to every three weeks. And uh, also, like you said, like champion data... I don't know. They don't run the fantasy games. Obviously, they have they they track the where the actual players are playing positions. But I don't know if a if a stats provider should be the one that's also setting the fantasy positions because even between classic and draft games, there are differences. And so I, I would err towards having extra position eligibility, particularly at the start of the year. Um, but throughout the year, the the plan will be more to go. Um, sort of midway. So if their official position on the AFL website changes, that's the one that we'll be basing our changes off. So it's roughly a 50% time time on ground threshold or position threshold. Whereas I think at the moment for AFL Fantasy and Supercoach, it's probably, I think it's a bit lower, 35, 30%. 35. So, um, yeah. yeah, so it won't be as aggressive as those guys because you end up with 60 changes at, at round six, but you'll have a more every three weeks, You'll have anyone who's had their sort of primary position, let's say, changed. They'll get a change in keeper. It's exciting. The good news is here at the coaches panel, every single time those player DPP changes come, 
We got you covered with an article at coachespanel.tv. The video will drop at YouTube and an audio podcast wherever you get it. We'll be sharing them with you as well right throughout the year. So if you're like, oh, I wonder if the positions are going to drop, don't you worry. The Coaches Panel and Keeper are teaming up in 2025 to share those positional changes for you heading into the new season. Hey, I got a couple of quick questions. I know we've got to let you get back to finish developing the app, <laughs> getting stuff sorted. But there's been some customizations that I know some in the community would love to have to their draft league. Uh, the beauty of Keeper is it lets you have as big a league as you like with as many coaches as you like, obviously up to a, a reasonable smart threshold. But people have wondered and interested Can you lock a position in that forces us to draft or select a certain style of player? Now, again, other formats, you can use the honors system and go, everybody has to have a key position player. Um, What's the versatility and flexibility like for commissioners and leagues to go, you know what? You have to have a key position player. If you have to have a certain type of player on your field, not just the five defenders, seven mids, one ruck, five forwards. Some positions call it a, a utility where we see an opportunity for coaches and leagues to have this level of customization about specific selections that have to be have to be selected and picked. Yeah, there's there's um lots of different ways you can do that. Uh, one one thing I am toying with at the moment is actual key position players, so an extra slot for a key defender and a key forward. Um that one is definitely an opt-in feature, right? You need to be able to... It changes the whole dynamic of your league. All the players who were yeah. uh, defenders now become either a, I guess, a key or a general defender, whether you're... A, a normally, if you're, if you're over about six foot two. Um, but yeah, there, there's that. There's also in terms of uh, lineup slots on your field, you can choose kind of how many of each. That's pretty standard these days. But also, yeah, how many key positions? How many... If you want to have a utility position where anyone can play... That'll be available, but also if you want to customize it where it's like a, a midfield or forward, for example, or a, or, a, or a back center, you can also add these like flexible positions as well. So um, lots of customization. The way it's been set up is to sort of give you that, that full control over that. Um, and, and yeah, you can play it your own way. Uh, I think that's the beauty of keepers. It allows your redraft, single season, keeper, dynasty league, honestly, even your category league. However you like the league to be functional, structured up, and the customizations you want to have, keepers going to be able to give you the best opportunity to be able to facilitate your league to be able to do that. I want to ask about some history now that Keeper might be able to have. Not only is it Keeper the place where you can keep your draft league together, keep players for the entirety of their AFL career, should you choose to, but you're also going to be able to keep and retain history of players. So will we see an equivalent of a league MVP arrive in Keeper in 2025? Yeah, the the history is the best part, right? That's what we all do it yeah. for. And um, you know, when you when you start to get into the ten, fifteen years of, of play, there's nothing better than going back and uh, reminiscing over your best lists and and your best wins, things like that. So, um, as you, when you first sign up, there's ability to actually uh, tell us how many leagues you, or how many seasons you've been playing for, and fill out some of the results from those past seasons. So you do have that that initial record book set up, and then going forward. Um, like you said, if if a player gets traded, that gets logged against their profile. If they um, each year if they win the the league medal, which is sort of a three two one, like the Brownlow medal, if they've if they've won that, that'll stay on their profile. And so you kind of accumulate almost like the AFL, a whole set of records for both teams, individual players, and um, yeah, it's what what brings the leagues to life and that's what we're all here for we're all here to to think we're managers of teams and gms list managers and like whatever i can do to help you and it's not even i'm not coming up with these ideas people have been doing it themselves for years right so i'm just trying to help you facilitate that and that's the value that um the keeper can provide is just giving you a way to make your life easier and don't bury don't bury things in spreadsheets. Get it out. Get on the platform. Make it easy to check up when you're at the pub with your mates and you want to say, "Oh, who won in 2016? Or who who did you beat in the grand final? What was the score?" Bang! Just just go to the archives and find it. 
you, you can start to also not only have these great receipts that you can talk about how great you were with a player you traded for, you picked up off the player pool. There's also some moments where if you want to have some receipts on an opposition coach and go, look, you delisted Sam Flanders. I got him off you. It gives you all those fun things that you love to have with the banter of a draft league. Keeper gives you all those historical pieces. What's your best ever win? Who won the league MVP? When did you trade them? All that kind of stuff. It is inbuilt into Keeper. It's one of the great favorite features that I've seen that has been put together for Keeper. I can't wait for everybody else to be able to get to experience it. One last question. I know we've got to let you go. Um, if I want to bring my draft and my league over to Keeper, how do we do that? So at the moment, there's an early access program, which is very, very full. It's a bit of a bit of a long list of people who have already registered. But don't let that deter you because we're going to try and get everyone in as soon as possible. So if you jump on at keeperfantasy.com, um, just pretty much just leave your name and email. Give us a bit of info about your league so we can maybe uh, bump you up the list if needed, if you're, if you're going to help us test a particular feature that's um, that's still in progress. And yeah, and then basically we'll get an invite email that'll come to you. You'll have a code in that email, which you'll enter in, and then that'll allow you to set up a league. And then from there, you know, um, as one of the, one of the things, um, to help commissioners, cause this is what really at the end of the day, Keeper is a platform that is a tool for commissioners to run their league, right? As much as everyone else can join in and set their teams, it's, it's a tool for you as a commissioner to come in and set things up and manage your league. So it's, um, so once you get in there, you don't even need people, you don't need to wait for your league members to join. If you want to evaluate the, the product, <clears throat> you can tell us how many teams are in your league. You can set the names of all those teams. You can tell us who the coach is, and then you can start even adding players to those teams. So um, all that can be done before you even invite your first coach. So it's um, it's pretty clean sort of onboarding process there. And yeah, and then away you go. You, once you're ready, once you're happy with how it's all looking, if you've got any questions, obviously get in touch with us. Um, and then you can maybe invite your, your, your league coaches and start basically running your off-season. So, <clears throat> so certain leagues will be doing trades at the moment, um, maybe even just your nom- nominating keepers, for example, so in that off-season period. And then once all the new playlists are confirmed in around de- December time, we'll look to try and move into the next phase, which is the preseason phase. And that's when you can actually start configuring some more options, for example, your lineups, um, your, your, obviously your draft date, things like that. So it's a bit of a phase rollout in terms of features because there is a lot to get done. I'm not going to lie. It's a... It's a very ambitious project, and um, and yeah, you've just we've already talked about a bunch of things. I'm trying to get in there, so um, working as fast and hard as possible as we can. And then, as I said, when we move into the next phase, there'll be another set of features that become available for you to set up. Um, looking more into next season. It's so exciting what you're doing with Keeper at the moment. The great news is. In this period of time where leagues are maybe in that, that, okay, I'm starting to think about selections. I'm starting to do my final trades before, again, the positions change, the format, who the draftees, where they come, what that means, all that sort of stuff. It starts to hit all those core elements. So that's one of the great, beautiful things that Keeper does for us is, is it allows all those centralized features. We love what Keeper is doing for us and how good and how strong it's going to be heading into 2025. It'll take a few minutes for you to get all the details once you submit your league in to Ryan at that website address that he shared. But once you do, my goodness me, it's absolutely incredible the customizations that you can do in Keeper in 2025 for this upcoming season. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to open it up. And yeah, it's a, it even even talking about it now, you know, it's been a long journey to get to this point. Um, thank goodness it's we live in an age with AI code assistance and things, which is almost like having a, a team of people helping me build it out because um, there, it is very ambitious, for, again, uh, what we're trying to do here. But I think everyone's going to love it. Um, it's all about hopefully you want to come on the journey with, with me. And um, I've always loved the feedback of the community. So the more um, more ideas we get, the, the more feedback I, that – that I can hear from actual leagues helps prioritize as well. So um, if there is something you've always wanted to see or something you track manually, uh, let me know and yeah, I'll make sure it's factored in accordingly. So 
Keeper's got some pretty amazing stuff for us in store in 2025. Uh, man, we, we could just go back through the list of all the customizations, all the flexibility it gives commissioners, how easy it's going to be for you to make future trading, the history it is, the style of league you have. It can be customized and be a perfect space for you. And we haven't even got to looking at what it looks like on draft day. That is going to be for another episode. This is literally just trying to help you to know about this great new platform that's coming that Ryan has built for you as a commissioner and a draft coach and is going to be fantastic to help you navigate. Hey, mate, we've got to let you go because you have got some stuff to finish up for us so we can open up Keeper really, really soon. Mate, a pleasure chatting with you. We're going to spend a little bit of time chatting with you throughout the off-season, though, as we share great new features that Keeper will bring for us in 2025. Thanks, MJ. It's been great to chat and, um, yeah, love love the coaches panel have got behind Keeper and look forward to, yeah, working together on a few things and, yeah, those particularly those player positions and, yeah, let's let's chat some more soon. We love Keeper and what it's going to be doing for the fantasy footy community in 2025. We love the partnership that we have and the great stuff that's going to be coming for you as a commissioner and a draft player in 2025. There'll be some more video episodes and audio episodes before Keeper officially opens, talking you through a few more of the features. But again, if you haven't got your league over onto Keeper yet, the link and the website that Ryan shared is in the description of this episode. So make sure you click on that. Bring your league over. It's going to be the place to be for drafts in 2025. Ryan, we love you. We're so thankful for the work you've done for the draft community. We appreciate you. We love the partnership. And bring on 2025. Coaches panel, teaming up with Keeper, teaming up with you to give you the best draft experience you could ever imagine in 2025. Can't wait. Let's go.